allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll get in. I just gotta get myself in yeah. somehow. Roll call, please. Supervisor Vecchio. Here. Councilman McCarthy. Here. Councilman Wareheim. Here. Councilwoman Newark. Here. Councilwoman Inzarella. Here. Correspondence number one. Parade Run Walk Sergeant John W. Cook, BFW, Post 395, Veterans Day Parade. Number two, Building Department Report, July 2017. Number three, Parade Run Walk Hopog High School Homecoming Parade, first reading. Four is Parade Run Walk Hopog School 5K Family Run Fun Run, first reading. Five is Parade Run Walk Hopog Schools 5K Family Fun Run, first reading. Six, Parade, Run, Walk, St. James Chamber of Commerce, St. Patrick's Day Parade, first reading. Seven, Parade, Run, Walk, Frank Toto Memorial Foundation, 15K, Run, first reading. Number eight, Special Event Community Association of the Greater St. James, Car of the Greater St. James, Car Show, first reading. Number nine, Parade, Run, Walk, Rotary Club of Smithtown, Go for the Green, 5K, first reading. Anybody wish to be heard for or against the granting of those permits? If not, we'll move on. Resolutions. The town board to authorize the town clerk to advertise for the following bids to be returned at Town Hall 99 West Main Street, Smithtown, New York, on the dates indicated. Bid number 17-080, tractor truck, returnable September 21st, 2017. Bid number 17-078, stop hazardous household waste program, returnable September 21st, 2017. Bid number 17-084, refuse removal to, from town facilities, returnable September 28th, 2017. Councilwoman Inzuela? Councilwoman yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Beck? Yes. Town Board to award the following bids and authorize the purchase of the associated goods and services as per 2A, B, and C. Bid number 17-049, tennis and ball field court renovations at Gaynor Park to Classic Turf Company. Bid number 17-067, cast iron drainage items to General Foundries and Campbell Foundry. Bid number 17-066, inspection, maintenance, and repair of aerial apparatus. Councilwoman Nizarella? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Rick? Yes. Item number three, the town board to do study and deliberation of subject record to issue a <coughs> secret negative declaration as per 3A application for site plan approval of Autist Senior Living LLC. Councilwoman Nizarella? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Rick? Yes. Town board to approve the following. Minutes. Town board regular minutes, August 8, 2017, at 2 p.m. minutes. And balance B through T, highway department to purchase two six-wheel dump body trucks with plows. Highway department to purchase utility tractor. Highway department to purchase an asphalt paver from All Island Equipment. The purchase of electronic imaging services from New York State Industries for the disabled. Adoption of Amendment Chapter 135 of the Code of the Town of Smithtown for a public hearing held August 8, 2017. Retain the services of Michael Haberman Associates for an appraisal. Deputy Chief Fire Marshal Andrew Brofman in the State Department of Public Safety to attend an Austin seminar. Extension of bid number 17-024 for animal shelter supplies. J, Department of Environment waterways to prepare and a supervisor to sign and submit a letter of intent and application to the New York State Environmental Facilities for Clean Vessel Assistance Program. K, purchase of an airboat with trailer from Panther Airboat Corporation. L, adopt 2010 Associate of Shelter Veterinarian's Guidelines for Standard of Care at the Animal Shelter. M, animal control officers as per the printed agenda, Denise Weibel and Deborah Buzzard of the Department of Public Safety to attend effective animal animal cruelty investigation and prosecutions in the New York State training course. 
N, extension of intermunicipal agreement with the town of Brookhaven for disposal of construction and demolition debris. O, addition of PACE Analytical Services LLC to the town's pre-qualified professional services list. P, extension of bid number 17-087 for maintenance of servers with NPA computers. Q, Forte Payment Systems, Inc. R, site visits to indoor composting facilities. S, to approve TDFR number PU-15, an agreement with Four Harbors of Audubon Society to perform volunteer litter collection at Young's Island, Sony Brook Harbor. And adoption of social media policy. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Noack? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vice. Yes. I have number five, the town board issue a written consistency determination pursuant to chapter 151 of the town code application 2015-3 by Elite Towers consistent with LWRP subject to conditions stated in August 11, 2017 memorandum from the town planning director. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vector? Yes. I have number six, the town board authorized the acceptance of Six A, B, C, and D, acceptance of a check, acceptance of a donation, growth in, growth in life bond, and acceptance of a check donation. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Rector? Yes. Item right, number seven, the town board authorized the controller to execute the following as per seven A through U. These are housekeeping items for transfers and increase in revenue accounts and transfers. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vector? Yes. Town Board to authorize the supervisor to execute the following on form approved by the town attorney, amendment to agreement with Messinio Consulting Inc. for professional grant development services. B, term extension amendment to agreement with the Kings Park Central School District. C, consulting services agreement with Miguel Calamirio. MD for Services Medical Director for the Horizons Counseling Education Services. D, agreement with Dr. Sarah Mendelson for administrative and of vaccinations. E, agreement to extend services of Nelson Pope and design consultants for the emergency vehicle preemption and traffic signals. F, agreement with Suffolk County Community College to have students receive clinical fieldwork experience. G, term extension amendment to the agreement for catering services at the Smithtown Landing Country Club. H, specialized service agreement with all around Long Island tours. I, hold harmless with Smithtown Central School District. And J, professional services agreement with Young and Young for preparing town's department of parks building and grounds property for the purpose of a sewer pump station and easement design. Councilwoman Inzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilwoman Wareheim? Yes. Councilwoman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor? Yes. yes. On the personnel, the town board to approve the following matters per personnel items A through U, and there's a part-time appointment seasonal, part-time a change of termination dates for lifeguards, full-time appointment, part-time, part-time, part-time seasonal reappointments, seasonal reappointments, change of termination dates for laborers, change of termination dates again for the recreation department, except volunteer services of Patricia Fisher, to work for the Smithtown Employees Fall Blood Drive on September 13, 2017, a promotion of Diane McQuaid at the highway department, change of termination date for seasonal appointments of a laborer, acceptance of volunteer services, part-time appointment for the school-aged child care program, part-time appointment per attached list for assistant recreation leader, a termination of an employee, part-time appointment, and change of termination seasonal appointments. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Norwick? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vector? Yes. Town Board to authorize the following amendments to the Uniform Traffic Code and to authorize the Traffic Safety Department to install and maintain the necessary signs as Schedule G, Stop and Yield Intersections, Schedule G, Stop and Yield Intersections as per the printed agenda. Councilwoman Inzarella? Yes. Councilwoman Norwick? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Supervisor Becky. Yes. And, and we have one read on pin number 17-061 service truck. The highway department to purchase a truck with service body and crane from National Auto Fleet Group. Net price of $130,698 as per the item. Councilwoman Inzarello? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Becky. Yes. Mr. Troyes? Wish to be heard? T-R-O-I-S-E? <coughs> yes. 
Please come up. You should be heard, right? Oh, yeah. How are you? Um, I'm just, uh, I came here just to speak about a group home that's going on, my, on our block, um, Long Hill Road, Dead End Street, cul-de-sac. Um, Myself and all our neighbors are basically against this group home, not against a group home coming into the neighborhood, but the group home itself is at the end of a cul-de-sac where kids play, and there'll be six people in, in this residence that will, uh, will need uh, assistance, ambulance, buses, and whatever goes up that block is gonna be coming down that block. Um, my, my, my my point that I'm trying to make and what my other uh, neighbors will be making are that the way this town handles these group homes, which is all admirable, admirable and everything, uh, for them to be, uh, have a place to live, uh, to reside, uh, the problem is, is that the town doesn't give any notification to anybody on the block or even next door to the group home that 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 is being put up um, and I, I think it's a travesty that that none of you guys you know you get the letter on the desk about uh, Catholic Guardians uh, asking permission to do this and they give you an out whether it's saturation or not and there are there are three group homes w within a quarter of a mile from my house which is great they're on through streets um, I live off a of river road I fought with my school district for two years to get school buses to come down our block and they wouldn't come down our block because of the fact it was a dead end street with a cul-de-sac in the end because the buses couldn't make the turn but we said to them nobody parks in the cul-de-sac everybody parks in their driveways but now with this group home coming in and with all the nurses aides and everybody that uh, will have to park there the school district is not going to allow out buses to come down the street anymore to pick up all the kids on the, on this block. Now they're going to have to go down, walk down to River Road, which is an extremely dangerous road. There's no lighting there. There's there's raccoons that live in the uh, the drain drainage system there, and I, I think it's ridiculous that nobody gets notified uh, on in the town of, of what's going on. Like Brookhaven had one being put in. The, the town of Brookhaven actually gave everybody an opportunity to speak about it, whether they're for it or against it. So a lot of people have, uh, you know, they're, they're thinking like, oh, how can you go against the group home? It's not going against the group home or the people in it. it it's, it's the fact that the town didn't even look at the location because it is not a good location for the uh, amount of cars that will be coming up this block now. So, you know, I... I, I think it's ridiculous that you. how you guys handle this. It, it doesn't, it's, it's not right to, to not let people know what's going on in the neighborhood until it's too late. Did not the sponsoring agency visit your neighborhood? Nobody. Nobody came to the doors. Nobody, you know, uh, I think they could at least wrote us letters or something to let us well, know what was going on. Well, let me just say this. When we received the letter, I call each of the executives of the group home and ask if they will be notifying the neighbors, yeah. and they all tell me they will be. And they haven't. But will be when? I mean, it, the house already closed. They're already doing work on the house, yeah. and it, it's it, it's kind of it's not right, you know. Well, let me just say this to you: uh, whether they notify you or not, they have every right to do it by state law, and they will just go ahead and do it. Oh, I know. I agree with you. Yeah. But I think you guys, as council people or council women, council, you know, persons, uh, should notify the town as well. At least the block or something, or the the street that it's going on, just to let them know what's going on. Well, to give us an opportunity to speak, maybe to give us an opportunity to put our house on the market to move if we wanted to. There's, there's some people on our block that are looking to retire, and truth of the matter is. It's not proven, and it never will be proven. It can't be proven. But group homes or certain, uh, in certain locations, will bring back down the value of some, some homes. Mr. Troisi, your time is up. I'm sorry. No, I know. I, you, you were okay. talking to me, so. Gene Zipfel. 
Hi, my name is Joan Zipfell, and I am also here to speak about this proposed home, 21 Long Hill Road. Um, here today to discuss a very troubling situation which has arisen within the township of Smithtown whereby private agencies are being allowed to buy homes in completely residential neighborhoods and establish group homes without any prior notification, public discussion from the residents living in those very neighborhoods. While, those, while these privately owned agencies seem to be completely altruistic in setting up group homes for intellectually and developmentally disabled individuals, they can also include people who are mentally ill. The truth is that many people not living in these affected neighborhoods can and are very sympathetic to people labeled disabled. I'm sure they would be less sympathetic if they realized there is no way of knowing exactly who is going to be living next door or across the street from you and your family. Catholic Guardian brings in $92.2 million in annual income. I have the source written down. I have no doubt that these nonprofit agencies are in reality large commercial businesses that are being allowed to set up in our neighborhoods for commercial gain without any zoning changes required. They are, in addition, giving an added bonus by being removed from the Smithtown tax rolls, which places a greater burden on all of us in, who pay these very high property taxes. Presently, there are 11 of these group homes in Smithtown. A letter addressed to Supervisor Vecchio received on March 17th from the private agency Catholic Guardian specifically provided for a 40-day time period for the town to review their application for this particular home. One of the reasons given to decline this group home is that the nature and character of the area will be substantially altered. Certainly if you have non-residents, home aides, buses, possible ambulances, and other frequent traffic continually driving up and down a cul-de-sac, which by nature necessitates a turnaround, the negative impact of allowing this particular group home should have been addressed. Furthermore, Long Hill Road must be entered from and exited onto River Road in the middle of two extreme curves, a true safety problem. Indeed, years ago, a proposal to open up our street was actually de denied by the town based strictly on how difficult it is to exit our block. Furthermore, another reason the town could have denied this particular location and I think Mr. Triosi spoke about it, is that we have so many right near us. Um, also, while these homes might be sanctioned by the state, there appears to be no further effort to monitor the quality of these homes. Are you finished all, right. all close to it? I am close to it. All right. Thank you. Um, last year in 2016, 4,100 cases of abuse in these uh, group homes was investigated by the federal government is now investigating. There's a federal probe being called for these state-sponsored, privately-run group homes. This is a Newsday, August 14th. What's troubling is the cloud of secrecy that seems to color the approval of these group homes and the failure of the town to analyze the appropriateness of this particular location. This present practice allows for no transparency, is thoroughly undemocratic, and completely undermines the rights of all homeowners, voters, and taxpayers of Smithtown, and should be addressed by all elected town officials regarding the current situation at Long Hill Road and all future installations of group homes within the town. Um, we have a petition of about 75 names to present, so thank should you. I give it to the town clerk? Yes, all right, please. thank you. And mango. I'm Ann Mango and I live on Long Hill Road for 29 years and I've been in Smith Tenet uh, resident for 40. I would like to address the people who are criticizing our reaction to the group home. Our small dead end street is made up of residents who have been there for 20, 30, 40 years and new young families with small children who up to now 
felt safe to enough to play on the street because of the lack of traffic. That will change. We are teachers, people in the medical field, retired police, contractors, and plumbers. I own my own small business, and my main client for the last six months is working with four buildings of a psychiatric hospital, which are completely filled. I spend several hours a week among the patients and the staff. I have witnessed and admired the doctors, nurses, aides, and the care caring staff. It takes a special person. It doesn't seem to be the case in some of these state and privately grouped homes. 2013 to 2016, there were 82,000 abuse and neglect cases in New York State. The state formed a department to investigate these. It took eight months for the state controller to obtain only 8% of the reports from the Justice Center. Last year, it reported 4,169 cases of abuse and neglect that were substantiated in public and private facilities. Finding out the punishment is even harder. 251 state employees lost their jobs, yet more than three quarters of the cases happened in privately run facilities, like the Catholic Charity um, facilities, and state officials say they don't track what happens to those employees. We're not angry about, about the residents coming. We want them to live in happy, healthy environment. We are angry at Mr. Vecchio. Okay. You dis this is not a dictatorship. This is a democracy. And you took away our right of the taxpaying dollars on Long Hill to discuss our concerns and options. You decided that we were not important enough. Like the sewers, quote unquote, we have identified several locations for obvious reasons, cannot discuss them in public form. We approximately give the town and the state $300,000 in taxes, part of which pays your salary, and we deserve somebody who is transparent and who work for us. Thank you. Donna Banchett. Hello, hello town board. I have a few concerns I'd like to address. One of, is in front of the crazy crep. There's a broken sidewalk. Well, actually, there's a tree stump that's in around the, the red pavers that were put in there, which is quite dangerous. I've emailed Mr. Vecchio. I've gotten no reply over it. Also, in front of the um, dance studio, Fred Astaire, there's, if you're coming out, again, from your passenger side of your car, the red pavers dip approximately three and a half inches, which you could trip and fall. Again, I've emailed and gotten no reply over that, and I've posted these videos on Facebook over two months ago, and there's nothing being done about that. Um, Mr. Werheim, question? Any follow-up with the wig salon, with the um, activity that's going uh, on top of that? Both of those locations that you gave me are still under investigation by public safety. Okay, because um, I've been going by there not as much as I would think, but uh, quite often. And uh, I see um, no activity from public safety or the police department, but I do see many cars parked in and out. If I head down to Boston Market and I come back, there'll be one car there, and then I'll come back, there'll be another car. So I've been watching it, and I definitely see that. And I have a lot of the um, neighbors that live up the hill consistently texting me pictures of cars that are in the parking lot, and they can't make these board meetings, so they're asking me to speak on their behalf. Okay, I will, I will uh, double check with public safety. If you want to give me a call tomorrow, I'll see what, what the status of it is. That'd be great. Both locations are. And um, this morning I heard at the work session, Matt was discussing it with social media. It seems maybe that you're saying you can't access social media from like a Smithtown employee f to a Smithtown computer, but I think you've got to be more broad and make it where they can't do it from their home computers also. I hope that was in there. Um, the, like for instance, police department personnel, they're not allowed to go on social media and make fools of themselves and make, they, they're held to a professional standard. And I think that the town of Smithtown employees should be held to that. So I hope it's not just Smithtown 
like you, you mentioned the animal shelter in your meeting this morning, if it could be any department, I hope that they can't go to their home computers, go on Facebook and, and talk you know, nonsense and make the town look disrespected. Um, again, I don't know. Matt, could you answer that? Is that possible, a question you could answer? You'll answer it after the meeting. Okay. And also, while you're on the subject, um, I find it insulting when I watch the uh, work session that Mr. McCarthy is texting for over three minutes of a 14-minute mm -hmm. work session. If it was that important, he should have, I think he should have excused himself and left the room if there's a situation. Okay. Speaking, being texting for over 20 minutes, 20% 20 of a work session, you laugh. It's it real funny. It, it wasn't You took $30,000 from us it also. Was, it was you stole $90,000 It was an email from to the building department on a complaint, just like yours was, to try to handle it at the same time. Amy Fortunato. Nice try. <coughs> Amy Fortunato, good afternoon. Um, uh, I'm still, of course, concerned for New York Avenue. I don't think we've got any meeting set up with this, or I don't think you all have a meeting set up with the uh, school board. If you do, I'd love to know the date, or I'd love to be in on it, if there's any information on that. There's no meeting with the school board at this moment because they've decided at this point in a letter to us, basically, to put the whole issue in limbo until mm -hmm. they meet again as a school board. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I, I still am concerned. I know that there's going to be like uh, appraisals done of some of the outbuildings. No, we won't do appraisals to outbuildings because if they don't want to sell to us, we're not going to be selling our oh, buildings. Okay. We're not going to waste twenty thousand dollars doing outside appraisal of our buildings until we can reach an agreement with them. Uh, so the so the notation in the agenda has nothing to do with it. Which there's note? like an, uh, um, a bid for thirty five hundred thirty five hundred dollars maybe towards appraisals. That's not that's, that's not that's nothing to do with that at all. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. So anyway, all that to say, of course, I'm concerned about revitalization in our town. And I think that, you know, we'd like to see the historic building, Arthur, Arthur House, you know, renovated, taken care of. I'd like to see the river, you know, uh, enhanced, looking good. You know, I, I'm, I'm horrified, of course, you all, you know, I know it was late in the day, but I sent you a letter about the Oasis, you know, our landmark, you know, bowl, you know, that reminds us of our town's uh, formation is sitting next to another landmark, uh, the Oasis, and it's right on top of the, the county park, Paul T. Gibbon Park. It's not right. I don't want to see that as I come into town. I want to see a designated business district. So, you know, and not to, and it feels ridiculous to even mention the bright blue color across the street, but if we had a designated business districts in our town throughout, we could have a code, we could have standards, we could have character. So I'm just concerned about those kind of things. Um, and of course, the Oasis, I did, you know, email and I have sent you letters, so let's see if we can get this illegal thing out of our, we just wink, and I'm tired of winking or just driving by, and it's hard, it's hard to see people there. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nancy Ferguson. Yes, sir. Nancy Featherston from uh, Long Beach, Nissaquah. Supervisor Vecchio and council members. Last May, I asked the board to turn a critical eye to the erosion of Long Beach caused by bulkheads in the bluff, as well as the use of the town beach for equipment and materials access to build them. Long Beach and the dune protecting Stony Brook Harbor are being eroded at about a half foot a year due to lack of sand supply caused by bulkhead stopping bluff erosion. Four more structures were built last spring, one with no DEC permit and no village permit, but we allowed access through the cut. Nissaquag Village variance hearings continue this month for two houses owned by a San Diego resident. The engineer has four more application inquiries given the current lax regulatory atmosphere. If built, 90% of the sand supporting Long Beach will be cut off. Narrowing of the dune protecting the parking lot and the harbor will increase, making breach to the harbor inevitable. The Bluffs and Long Beach are New York State specially designated Type 1 natural protective features requiring environmental impact review. However, Nissaquag Village <coughs> violates their own code and law and accepts them as Type 2 indicating no environmental impact on neighboring properties and beaches. Then, contrary to New York State coastal policy, the DEC accepts and approves them as type two, 
avoiding environmental impact review. When the Joint Village LWRP Commission correctly denies their consistency with state regulations, the Nisiquag Board grants a variance to everyone. At this point, there is no protection from the state DEC for Long Beach in spite of its fragile state designation. Mayor Richard Smith at a recent meeting made it clear that the board has every intention of non-compliance with village <coughs> law written to support New York State regulations and their LWRP and will continue to approve seawall variances. These houses are not falling off the bluff. They have 90 to 200 feet of lawn to the edge. They want peace of mind when they realize what they bought. I respectfully request that the town board refuse access across town property, the town dune cut, town beaches and parking lot, for the heavy equipment carrying piles of two and a half ton rocks to facilitate construction of state policy, inconsistent erosion seawalls causing damage to our own beaches and dunes. State regulations prohibit heavy equipment use above the tidal zone, that's a fact. The applications for these walls violate Nisiquag Village Code and our LWRP Mrs. New York DOS. One and the sentence. DOS Coastal Management Program and Policy Inconsistent. The board's permission granting private parties access to this purpose is discretionary and destructive of our own town property and beaches. The board, please do not allow it. Thank you. William G. Holtz. Good afternoon, uh, William Holst. Uh, I'm here to uh, inquire about whether or not there's some sort of unanimity on the uh, current town board in terms of not proceeding with the appraisals on the uh, six possible buildings that might be uh, consolidated in the uh, New York uh, Avenue property. Um, I know uh, what uh, Council uh, Member uh, McCarthy said about uh, a $20,000 expense, but if you're trying to make a determination in terms of what this is going to cost the town in terms of acquiring the administrative building over on New York Avenue where the offices could be consolidated, the true cost of such an acquisition would be offset by any sale of the downtown buildings that currently are being occupied by town departments. So to, to put out to the public it's going to cost us so many millions of dollars without really being able to uh, offset that with the uh, sale of possible town buildings, um, it doesn't really give a true value of what it's going to cost the town to consolidate. Um, as a former Suffolk County legislator that chaired the Downtown Revitalization Committee, uh, we went through the, the 18 legislative districts of Suffolk County in, in, in 1998 and 1999. And the findings in Bayshore and Patchogue and Riverhead and throughout Suffolk County was that Government buildings in downtown areas do not add value to downtowns. So it, I would strongly recommend looking at getting those appraisals done, looking at those buildings in terms of being consolidated, reducing the number of buildings in the downtown area so that you actually can generate <coughs> some real revitalization here right in this area. So uh, I, would, I would like you all to consider that that cost of $20,000 to proceed with the appraisals <coughs> on the existing buildings utilized by town departments proceed. And I think there's members of the public that are expecting that to be going on. So when Council Member McCarthy now says that that's off the table in terms of going ahead, uh, I don't know if that's a unanimous opin opinion of the town board or whether it's something that you ought to, you know, I certainly suggest that you reconsider that if that's something you've decided because I really think that in order to put this out to the public and get some feedback, you have to have the offsetting sale of the existing buildings to offset the cost of a possible consolidation. And I'd like you to consider that. Thank you very is, much. At this point, Mr. Holtz, the school has told us that they have no intention to selling it at this point at all until they talk well, further you know, in the future. Again, so for us to waste taxpayers' money, I don't based on what you're, you're saying, just Can like you said, you said that you're not going to be doing um, these appraisals. I know, I'm just trying to finish. Let me just finish it and you can. The bottom line is do we spend taxpayers' money? I'm only one of five here. 
Do we spend taxpayers' money when the school district has now has told us that they have no intentions at this time, point in time to sell us the building? It has nothing to do with our appraisal, their appraisal. It has They said as a board that they haven't reached a decision. They're not going to reach a decision. I've already reached out to them to see if we can sit down with them again. If we can get them open to selling to us again, then that would be prudent. But to spend money when they're not even interested at this point in time really wouldn't be prudent. That's I'm one of five. You can ask the other four. Okay. All I'm saying is if you're looking at something in the you know, six to seven million dollar range in terms of a possible offer by the town, I think you'd want to know whether or not you've got already six or seven million dollars worth of real estate that you can recoup the value of. If we can get them to the bargaining table, I'm sure this board would be more than happy to do the appraisal on our outlying buildings. Well, I think you have to do the appraisal first. Thank you. Well, the question is moot. It's no longer for sale. Yeah. Um, I think Mr. Holtz was the last person. Yes. Yes. So I'll move to close the meeting. Second. <coughs> Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Councilwoman McCarthy? Yes. Councilwoman Wareheim? Yes. Councilwoman Noak? Yes. Councilwoman Inzarello? Yes.